welcome to this uh, lesson on introducing quantum mechanics and we are discussing in a sequence of videos about what we call the Dirac notation or the usage of bra and catch notation. So this is lesson number 6.2 and just to give you a quick overview that in the earlier lesson which we started that is the lesson 6 we introduced the concept of Dirac notation, the bra and the cat vectors and we have divided this particular subject into three parts. So we just started with the introductory part and we have explained the usage and Schrodinger's equation and how the usage of bra and cat vectors happens. Now in this video uh, we are taking a step ahead and we are, uh, uh, we are willing to see that how our wave, wave functions behave in Hilbert space the Dirac notation and the state vectors, scalar products and something more. So in this lesson we are taking one step more in introducing and learning about bra and cat vectors. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. A warm welcome to lesson 6.2 on Dirac notation. So let us go and see what are the topics we are covering today. So we are covering what are wave functions in Hilbert space, uh, bra and cat vectors, scalar product in bra, bra and cat notation and inner product in bra and cat notation. Okay, so as per the lesson plan, we have already uh, divided into beginners, intermediate and advanced level. We have covered the uh, beginners level and we are now at the intermediate level and we will see what are wave function as a vector in Hilbert space. Okay, so let us consider this one as any one dimensional wave function described uh, as a quantum mechanical particle. Now the value of the wave function for example at location x1, at location x2 and x3 is given as phi x1, uh, sorry psi x1, psi x2 and psi x3. Uh, these are actually uh, the function value of different locations. Now we can assign a function uh, value of x to each of those locations, right? And we can represent the whole function values of list, uh, value of the function as a list of values. And we can think the list of values of the column vector psi as something like this. This the vector has the components, so psi x1, psi x2 and psi x3 and so on. Now this is pretty simple. Now the vector uh, which is uh, which has got these components, I mean to say, we can think of the uh, as a list of uh, as a column vector psi, which lives actually in not a physical space, but it, it is in an abstract space. So the vector is spanned by the coordinates psi x1, psi x2, and psi x3, and we can demonstrate this with a very simple figure, which is something like this, right? So this is basically. Uh, the real wave function, I would say psi x, and it has its three example uh, function values. So psi x1, psi x2, and psi x3. Three function, which is, uh, and this part of the uh, illustration, it shows that it is the three function values which span at an approximate coordinate system in which the wave function psi is understood as a vector. This is quite simple. But the question is that as soon as we introduce another function value, say for example psi x4, the space becomes four dimension and can no longer be shown graphically uh, uh, that becomes a problem. So the principle of how a function can be understood as a vector is clear and in the case of the wave function, we call it as the state vector. So uh, psi x4 becomes, uh, the uh, drawing becomes difficult. So theoretically what we can say that x has many or infinite values. Therefore there are also infinitely many associated function values which is calc of uh, psi of x obviously. And if there are infinitely many function values of psi x, the space in which the vector psi lives has something which is called a space, uh, an abstract space, right? So uh, the space in which the vector psi lives is an infinite dimensional space. We should remember that this infinite dimensional space is not a position space but it is an abstract space uh, and 
uh, we have just seen that uh, the, this abstract phrase in which uh, quantum mechanical state vectors lives is basically what is called a Hilbert space. So here is a kind of a not mathematical but a clear definition that this abstract space which we are talking about in which quantum mechanical state vectors lives is called a Hilbert space. So in general this is an infinite dimensional vector space right but it also can be finite dimensional as for example we can call the spin is something which is finite dimension. Now if we approximate the wave function for example numerical values with computer and etc by finitely many function values so this have will we see that it has got infinitely many components. So now it is clear that if we choose a larger value that is say for example yeah so here it is can be also finite dimensional as for example of spin uh, uh, for the spin states but if we choose a larger value for example n the representation of the vector as a vector I, I mean to say it becomes more accurate. So the key takeaway from this is that this uh, uh, space in which psi lives is actually an abstract space. The abstract space in which quantum mechanical, sp uh, st mechanical state vectors live, this is called Hilbert space. In case if it is finite, it can be something which is like a spin state, but it has got infinitely many components. So what we have learned from here, if this is something, this is the representation of the function wave function as a vector and we know that this is called a state vector and we have also learned that we can represent a quantum mechanical particle something like this in two ways. One is a wave function and second one is what we call is the state vector. Okay, so now we finally come to the definition that what are bra and cat vectors. What we can say that in order to distinguish the description of the particles of a state vector from the description of a wave function, we write the state vector in this way. So what we see that this is actually the ket vector. The wave function psi x is represented as a column vector, as you can see, is called a ket vector, and this is the sign uh, horizontal then psi followed by angular bracket. It doesn't matter whatever the way we write; it can be anything. And uh, this one, uh, this psi x, it means actually that it is a representation of the particle of a state vector and this one actually means it is it is a representation of the particle as a wave function. Now this is quite important right. So this means actually the notation whenever we see the first one it means the representation of the particle as a state vector and the second one as nothing but a wave function. Okay now another thing important which comes up which is this one. Uh, this is called the adjoint to the ket uh, vector which is called the bra vector and let us explore more about that. Okay, so uh, we turn the page and what we see is that this one is actually called a dagger, right? This is actually uh, called as a dagger. So for a uh, kind of a nice compact notation, we write the bra vector as with an inverted arrow something like this and uh, we should note that this one is also this adjoint is sometimes called an Hermitian adjoint. It is a different subject in linear algebra, not going into that. So to get the bra vector, right, so get the bra vector from the adjoint vector, what we need to do first is that we need to transpose the get vector, right, so that it makes, uh, makes it as a row vector and second we have to do a complex conjugate. Here you see that we I have put in stars which are basically complex conjugates and now we come to the definition of what is called a bra vector. This is uh, what are bra and uh, you know with the complex conjugate gets the bra vector. So finally let us understand that what are bra and ket vectors. Okay so what we see over here you know is that uh, the wave function that is this psi in is the in the vector represent the corresponds to the ket vector and the row vector this one adjoint to the ket vector is the bra vector. So you can see here this one is actually represent as this and we can calculate uh, yes definitely we can calculate with it practically in the same way as the usual vectors. The components of the vector can be complex and the number of components can be infinite. 
So uh, what we can tell from here is that uh, if we can create a kind of a scalar product or a tensor product, which we will see later in part of the video, that prop this this is something uh, quite new. Now what? Uh, okay, so the components of the vector yes can be complex and number of components can be infinite. Okay, now as we were saying that because we uh, create uh, uh, you know the same thing just like mathematics. Uh, in case of doing multiplications, etc. So, in that case, we could have a vector with infinitely many complex components. Practically, of course, this is the numerical representation of the cat vector, but we can form scalar product and inner product out of the bra vectors, and let us see how we do that. Okay, we can form a scalar product by the bra vectors. So, in an abstract dimensional space, scalar product is called an inner product. Right, you can we can form scalar products of the Brian cap vectors. So uh, in the in in finite uh, Hilbert space, the scalar product between the Brian cap vectors looks something like this. Right, very 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 similar to this. So we can see this are uh, many examples of why uh, in notating the uh, bra vector with a reverse arrow because this one, yeah. So we use this instead of this. Yeah. So that that is why we do not need to point uh, the scalar product with a vertic vertical line. Uh, we instead of put this by this. Okay. Let let me show you further examples which will things become clear. We can also form a scalar product between two different state vectors, which is this one. And uh, what we can do is that we can multiply the vectors using this sigma. So here this n actually represents the mul uh, the dimensions in Hilbert space. And we found this. So just like we can matrix in matrix algebra, we can multiply it as usual as just we do in case of a matrix multiplication. So this is beautiful, isn't it? I mean to say this actually shows how the uh, matrix and the Brian cat vectors really get transformed, and we can do the usual matrix algebra to calculate those. Okay. So uh, now. So we can now uh, take to normalize an orthogonal state, for example, psi i and psi j. I will show the reason and give them the name of indices rather than different letters, right? So these are you see these are indices, and the scalar product gives either zero or one. So uh, the scalar product of two different orthonormals uh, state gives zero when i is not equal to uh, uh, j, right? And the second one, the scalar product of two equal orthonormal states gives i equals to j, right? So the orthogonality actually states uh, uh, can be combined into a single equation with a Kronecker delta sign, which I have dealt in earlier in another part of the video, and Einstein summation convention, which looks something like this. Like this actually shows the scalar product of two orthonormal states. Okay. This is a scalar product of two orthonormal states. Now, if further taking forward, we can make the illustrative uh, transition. So, from here, we can scale this uh, product with delta x, which goes from delta x to zero, and we can call this delta x sign changes to dx, to the, uh, and the sum sign of an uh, changes to something which is this one. It changes to this one as an integral, and it is this integral is also called the continuous sum. So th this integral is also called the overlap integral. You know, this is sometimes called overlap integral. Yeah, this is how it is because, like scalar product, it indicates how this one overlaps with this one. That is why it is called overlapping state. So uh, what happens is that the scaling takes place from delta x to dx, and the summation is uh, replaced by continuous sum, and this is called overlapping because one state overlaps with another so of course what we can do is that we can calculate the overlap even between two different states bra and cat vectors so something like this this is gets into something this is the inner product of two states and the scalar product uh, and inner product is a number that measures how much the two states this and this overlaps between each other right so here we calculated the overlap between two different states. We're using the inner product and the scalar product actually determines. This. Go back to this uh, slide once more. So what we see is the basic definition of 
inner product and we can form right the scalar product of the Brian cut vectors. So in finite dimensional Hilbert space, the Brian cut vectors look like this. So instead of uh, I would say multiplying the vectors just as we do, we have seen the multiplication. Instead of writing of this as a vertical bar, we put a dot sign. And we can also form the uh, form the scalar product from two different state vectors, which is this one, which is sigma sine, and this one denoting the Hilbert space uh, dimension of Hilbert space. This is the complex conjugate, and with this complex conjugate, what we can do, we can multiply uh, the vectors and in the usual form of matrix multiplication. So what I'm trying to make a point is that once we form the scalar product, we can form the different operations out of that. And also here we have seen that if we take the normalized orthogonal states and we replace it by indices, then the scalar product of two different orthonormal states are given by this. And the orthogonality, we combine it using a chronicle delta. And what we get is a scalar product of two orthonormal states. And then with the scaling factor of delta x going up to dx, we replace this delta x going to zero. The uh, sigma is usually represented by this, uh, I would say, the uh, the integral sign, which is called the continuous sum. And then from this one, we get this, which is uh, basically called the overlapping integral. And we say that how much this integral overlaps with uh, each other. So how much this overlaps with this. So uh, what we what the basic point and idea is that uh, all those are basically forming because of the operations that we do. So we can calculate as we see the overlap between two different states. This is the inner product of two states and forming the scalar product and inner product is a number that measures how much two states this one overlaps with this one. So these all these calculations all these uh, I would say uh, factors of the bra and ket vectors are now being formed so that we can understand how we can calculate the states, how things overlap each other. Now, what I would like to tell you is that this formation of, uh, you know, operations, multiplications, the overlapping integrals, the inner product of two states can be further extended, can be further extended into what that is called tensors and they form an integral part of quantum mechanics and general theory of relativity and we would look that as an advanced part in the next part of the video so thank you for watching and please do subscribe uh, to help me grow and if you want to contact us contact me you can write at this number you can also look into my other channel which is called generativity explained where i put up mostly videos related to general theory of relativity or you can follow me over my facebook instagram and linkedin uh, profile so thank you very much for watching Watch for the next video, which will be the advanced part of Brian Cat notation, and we will take this operations further. Thank you very much, and goodbye.